Well, welcome to another episode of the Art of Feminine Negotiation. I'm your host, Cindy Watson, and I'm really excited to be able to introduce you today to Carrie Tushoff. Welcome, Carrie. It is great to have you here. Thank you so much. I love coming on podcasts and talking about how to make pregnancy and birth better. I know. It's something that really, for our listeners out there, you may be thinking, hmm, what does this have to do with negotiation? But I had the pleasure of being able to meet Carrie virtually recently, and when I heard about what she does, I thought this is a really interesting approach that can certainly help with childbirth and beyond. So we're going to be talking about negotiating your subconscious for a better birthing experience and more. And for those who don't know her, Carrie Tushoff is the founder and director of Hypno Babies, which I'm sure you're wondering what that is. And we're going to look forward to chatting a bit about that. She's a certified hypnotherapist, a childbirth educator, and a hypno doula, which is interesting. She's also an author, an international conference speaker, and lecturer. She trains childbirth educators, doulas, midwives, to become hypno-babies, childbirth hypnosis instructors. So first, why don't we get, speak to the elephant in the room, Carrie? What is hypnobirthing and how did you come to birth the, the idea? Pardon, pardon, pardon my pun. <laughs> well, in hypno-babies, we don't hypnotize the babies. We teach pregnant women all over the world self-hypnosis so that they can have an easier pregnancy, birthing, and postpartum experience. And Hypno babies came about from my own births many long years ago, where I had been a Bradley natural childbirth instructor. Yeah. And I thought that, and, and a doula, which is a labor assistant, somebody who goes with people yeah. when they're having their baby in the hospital and they advocate for them and help them with positions and relaxation techniques and things like that. So I thought I knew everything that there was to know about having a baby, but I did not. I went into labor, which we call birthing in hypno babies, and it was excruciating. The baby, my first baby, both babies were turned around. So their little heads were down, wow. but grinding against my spine, the back of their yeah. heads, the whole way down. It's called back labor. And I had no idea there was that kind of pain and I was not prepared <laughs> for it. I had no tools whatsoever than just relax and Trust me, that does not work. Yeah. <laughs> so 36 hours into it, I went from the freestanding birth center where I was to the hospital across the street and wow. had an epidural. And I was never so happy in the world to see <laughs> anyone as I was that anesthesiologist coming at me with a big long needle about to stick it in my back. Oh, dear. And so then I had, I now have a very healthy respect for people who choose epidurals. Yeah. I totally get it. And I think that, you know, of course, everybody's choices in birthing are, are valid and very personal. And, you know, I'm up for whatever you're up for. But I, the, the thing is, I was traumatized. Yeah. I was traumatized by the pain and I was traumatized by losing my unmedicated birthing. I thought everybody should have an unmedicated birthing. That was the only thing for me. It was never going to happen any other way. And so through both of those things, and also the way that I was treated by a nurse who will not be named, I was traumatized afterwards. Yeah. And that's how I knew in a very personal way what birth trauma was. Yeah. And then four years almost to the day I gave birth to my son okay. and his birthing was only seven hours long, but it was equally horribly <laughs> painful. Yeah. And I remember uh, that. <laughs> my husband was pushing on my back to try to help the pain. My sister was holding my hands in front of me as I was squeezing them to death. And after a particularly gnarly contraction, that I was screaming through, I looked up into my sister's face and she was sobbing. Aww. And she said, it should never have to be this hard. And it's like a light bulb went on oh, over my head. And I went, that's it. You know, even if I never have another child and I didn't, I'm going to find a way that people do not have to do this. Yeah. If they want a more holistic experience out of childbirth. So I found another hypno program and it didn't turn out to be what I wanted because there wasn't very much hypno in the birthing. But I then, the, the good news is then I went and studied hypnosis myself and became a hypnotherapist and found pain management uh, techniques for birthing and then found hypnoanesthesia, which is 
way a step farther. Yeah. That's where people who are allergic to medical anesthetics have to have surgery in some way. And so they work with a hypnotist ahead of time. And it literally retrains the subconscious mind that the surgeon's knife is going to feel like a tingling or a pressure. That's what I was looking for. And so I put that into hypno babies and the rest is history. Well, I can't wait to dig in. I mean, it's such an interesting concept. I think most people don't believe that we can't really negotiate with our subconscious and more and more people used to consider it so woo-woo and the science is finally catching up about a lot of this. But I must say, Carrie, I wish I knew you when I was delivering. We had started late, made up for lost time, had three kids in three years and every single one of the experiences was like grueling. And I did, I was adamant I wanted natural and I went natural And it wasn't until many, many years later, I realized it's because I was resisting. I was trying so hard to resist the pain that I didn't allow the process. And it just made for, you know, not a very pleasant experiences. And each of them, absolutely the same. In all three, my water didn't break. In all three, it was like really delayed getting me. They thought they were going to have to induce. And I mean, it just was a long process. So I tell me a little bit about like a little bit more about this sort of hypnotherapy, if you will, almost to to be able to negotiate with our subconscious to actually change the experience It change our experience of the pain, for example, how does that work? Okay, so I would like to start with what hypnosis is. And most people think that it's like stage hypnosis, where the hypnotist picks somebody out of the audience, (laughs) and puts them up on stage and then hypnotizes them. And all of a sudden they're quacking like a duck or (laughs) singing like Elvis or doing something else that they can't control. That's just entertainment. And it's a lot of fun and people love to do it. They love to be part of the entertainment. Real therapeutic hypnosis is completely different. And people need to understand that because the mind's language is imagery. So when you say hypnosis or anything else, you know, they'll be thinking about that stage thing. What people need to think about is the benefits Mm -hmm. of what hypnosis can do, because this is what it's like. So you have the conscious mind up here and you have the subconscious mind way down here. And in between is what's called the critical faculty. And it's the guardian. It lets some things into the subconscious mind, but not everything. So we need to make it take a nap. And that's what we do in hypnosis. We relax the body first so that then we can relax the mind. And in making the critical faculty take a nap, we can get down to the subconscious and literally retrain it. So we're retraining it. We're giving it new software. We're not taking anything out. We're just retraining what we've got, giving it new software. And it practices it every day until it completely believes it. Now, the subconscious mind is like a five-year-old child. So what you tell it, it doesn't have, it doesn't know any different Mm -hmm. between reality and the imagination that you're giving it. And it will then go on to produce things in the body and in the emotions that is the outcome that we want. So it can be used for literally anything. Wow. Emotional, physical, mental challenges, anything like that. In hypno babies, we are actually using it to train the subconscious mind that the sensations that that the mothers are feeling during childbirth, which is pushing and pulling and tightening and baby movements, all those are perfectly normal and they'll still be there, but without all the normal pain associated with it. We're using hypnoanesthesia, spreading it down throughout the birthing body and anywhere they want. Yeah. So now was this similar to the, at least the concept, like the Wim Hof training where you have, you know, a friend of mine's been bugging me to do for AJ because she teaches it and they cut a chunk of ice out of a frozen lake and uh, submerge themselves in. And again, there's a training in advance where they get the body conditioned to be able to be in such a relaxed state that you don't feel the pain or the freezing or whatever. Is it a similar concept or? I would think it would be. I'm not sure if they go as far as to change the concept. I don't think it could be done with just relaxing enough that you don't feel the pain. What we need to do is reprogram. So they're probably doing... I shouldn't say reprogram because people don't like that. Yeah, but that's very train yeah. <laughs> the mind that those that water is comfortable. 
Yeah. Or if it's not comfortable, it's at least beneficial to them, super yeah. beneficial so that it changes the perception of immersion. Yeah. So that to me, I would think would be what they're doing. Yeah. But we are negotiating with the subconscious mind because we are telling it to believe something new, but every day we've got to go in and reinforce and reinforce yeah. and reinforce because the subconscious mind would like to go, oh, I'm lazy. And if we don't do that <laughs> every day, yeah. then it's going to go back to its original belief systems. Okay. So once we negotiate it with it enough, we're basically in and it is basically there. And we have moms who are using the hypno babies birthing techniques for things like dental surgery years yeah. later because yeah. it stays in there after it's in it's in yeah well and i'm just my mind's just going like in a million directions here about the possible applications about this because i mean i often say that negotiating our mindset is our first and most important negotiation so i i'd love your thoughts on that just generally in life not even in terms of pain management or reshifting what are your thoughts about negotiating your mindset generally oh my goodness you have to have the kind of mindset that is open to change yeah. so first of all there are people who will sit there and say well i can't be hypnotized yeah. well everyone can be hypnotized because you are hypnotized all the time yeah. you are in hypnosis when you're waking up going to sleep reading anything watching a screen of any kind look oh. how many screens we have yes reading, you know, watching a movie, whether it's on a big screen or a small screen, everything is hypnotic. You can yeah. be standing in an elevator that goes up to the 23rd floor. And if you're watching those numbers, you're in hypnosis because yeah. it's very hypnotic driving when we we're driving along and we're thinking about what's going to happen when we get there. And all of a sudden we're someplace and we go, where did that last five minutes go? We were in hypnosis. So there's no, I can't be hypnotized. Yeah. You can be hypnotized. And I want to just the stop age. there for one sec here and put a pin in that. That that it's something just clicked for me when you said that. And I want to really put a pin in that for our listeners and our viewers out there because I think we a lot of people have, and maybe, maybe some of you are having resistance to this idea about programming or the, the concept of hypnosis because it seems woo-woo. But I love what you just said, Carrie. We are being programmed all the time, every day. And today, probably more than at any other time in history, frankly, we are inundated with constant programming and conditioning that affects everything we do and how we show up. So why not choose to get more intentional about how you're doing that? Get intentional about the program. That's it. I love That's that. That's it right there. I because love that. we are all hypnotized. So to get intentional will you be hypnotized intentionally? That is your question. Yeah. Not how can I be hypnotized? They can't <laughs> hypnotize me. I can't be hypnotized. So the mindset has to shift to, Ooh, what's the best way to be hypnotized? Would yes. I like to visit a hypnotherapist? Would I like to listen to the myriad of hypnosis audio tracks that are available out yeah. there? Things like that. But the mindset in, for anything has to be accepting. It has to be motivated to change, first of all. And second of all, it has to be accepting of the method of change. Mm -hmm. So to put all the other stuff out to the side, you know, and just, just put a pin in that, that you've ever thought or heard about hypnosis, and then start a new way of, of just mindset to be open to hypnosis and the benefits of hypnosis and that's what our moms need to do as well yeah so that's what we teach them I love this now can you see and again is it obviously is being a is sort of very I believe all of life is a negotiation it sounds to me like this is something that we could use as well in our day-to-day -day negotiation showing up with confidence for example like we you know we were just talking about that programming and conditioning and for women in particular, so much of our conditioning makes us believe we are less than, that we are not enough, that we need to keep ourselves small. Do you see this as a viable way as well, that people can negotiate with their subconscious to be able to show up with the kind of confidence that you need to be able to self-advocate or get what you want in life? Absolutely. And that's why, for instance, in hypno babies, we didn't start stop with birth hypnosis. We went on to create audio tracks that complement 
our program that are good for eliminating nausea, eliminating insomnia, nice. fear of needles, which is actually yeah. huge in the general population. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and many other things, helping with breastfeeding. But but we have gone on because there is such a huge amount of the female population, especially yeah. who needs self-confidence. Yeah. And so we literally have a track that's called super confident me. Oh, and from cool. the inside out, because you can sell yourself and affirmations are wonderful. We use them in hypno babies every day, positive things, but, but we need to get down to that belief system folder yeah thingy that is your subconscious yeah. and retrain it for self-confidence and the hypnosis part of it along with affirmations for self-hypnosis would be really wonderful I you know it. and we we use it for many other things we have tracks for focus and concentration for people who are distracted easily yeah. you know people who want to have weight release that's what we call it. We call it yeah. weight release because you have to really watch your wording. Yes. If you say like loss that. of any kind, it conjures up because yes. the mind's language is imagery. Loss is grief. So we, yeah. we have so many different tracks for different things at hypno babies that are really help people with their everyday lives. Yeah. And you can find you pick something, just pick anything and you will find a hypnosis treatment or session for that thing where we go down and retrain the subconscious mind to really work that out and build a bridge to a better life. And what advice do you have or tips that people can at least start now for themselves even to be able to negotiate their mindset so they can show up more powerfully and get more of what they want in life? Any, any tips you have for how to kickstart that process? Well, the first thing is to be open to it. The second thing is to really believe that you can be helped, that your life can get better and that you deserve it. Yeah. So that is like the big picture right there. You know, be open to it, be motivated and believe that you deserve it. And then act, you yeah. know, do something. There are people who through meditation have changed their lives. Yeah. Okay. There are people who do, who you know, went and became a Reiki practitioner because they wanted to help other people and in doing so healed themselves. Yeah. There are obviously, I know more about hypnosis and its benefits. So that is an option as well, but we can all change our lives by virtue of what goes on in here. Yeah. And I call this the minds plural yeah. because it's not people think it's just my brain it's not your brain your brain is involved and yeah. and in fact neurology is totally fascinating if you were to look at what happens to your brain when you think or say a positive word or yeah. thought versus a negative one through through yeah. an fmri scanner the things yeah. that happen to your brain by virtue of these things it's amazing you yeah. affect yourself, but you also affect the people that you're talking to. Yeah. So well, yes, the brain is involved, but the minds, the the conscious yeah. and subconscious minds. Yeah. That's your life. And believe it or not, the subconscious mind rules everything. Yes. It makes everything happen in your body and your conscious mind. So we need to affect it very positively and on a daily basis if we want to have those beneficial changes in life. And not just humans. As you were saying that, Carrie, I was clicking into some of those images that I've seen where they take crystals and some get played, you know, horrific, clashing, you know, negative kind of music and the others have beautiful and you see how the crystals develop differently. Some with some with beautiful, serene patterns, and the other with chaotic, very nasty. And plants, plants that are talked to with love and exactly. affirmation, thrive. And plants that are uh, belittled respond negatively and uh, and don't survive. It's quite remarkable, really. Now, I assume part of your process for hypno babies and helping in that birthing process is to to help the women sort of calm their nervous system to be able to do that. Do you have tips on how our audience can do that as well, whether in negotiations or if they're about to have a difficult conversation, do you have any tips for things they can do to just help calm their nervous system in that moment? There's a couple of things. 
one is obvious and that is the breath. Mm. Okay. So when we take deep breaths in and then a slower exhale, we literally calm our nervous system down from the inside out. You have to do it several times. So it's not just a big yeah. and you're done. Okay. But the easiest way to do it is in through your nose to maybe a count of seven, hold it for about three or four and exhale longer. Okay. To a count of 11 and really just let your shoulders flow down and your neck release and become consciously really more relaxed with each exhaling. And the other thing that is not so obvious to people or that they don't hear much about, but this also has to do with neurology is called the purposeful yawn. Mm. So whenever we take a moment and of course it's catching. Um, yeah. When to, you say that, I just wanted to. <laughs> exactly. To yawn. So if everybody who can, everybody can do this right now, take a deep breath in. Here's all the yawn. Oh, oh. Mm. That, that feels good. <laughs> yeah, you can actually feel a difference. So if you were to do that several times, yeah. it not only oxidates, oxygenates your body, but it it does affect the nervous system at the same time and you will become calm. Yeah. And it's really great to do that before you're about to negotiate with somebody or about something yeah. or write something Maybe it's controversial. Maybe you need, it's a little bit of conflict, anything yeah. like that. Even if you're not in front of anybody else to do these things to calm the nervous system will help you a lot. Oh, that is something I could have used. And I, frankly, all you, you should take that on the road with the legal profession because we were like, and I was guilty as well. Like just so everything, go, 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 go intensity, being ready to dance, being ready to like that fight or flight kind of adrenaline instinct. And I, I swear half the time we probably didn't breathe and and we would have been better served. Our clients would have been better served. Everybody, the system would be better served if people just showed up from a place of calm and a place of grace and allowed the space. So I love the work that you're doing on that. What's one of the most surprising things that you discovered while researching for your book? Well, my book is a course. Okay. <laughs> it's the Hypno Babies course, but I think the most surprising thing was that men needed the hypnosis too. Oh, okay. that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, sense. and this is, this is why I was teaching in the beginning, I was teaching hypno babies by myself as a childbirth class. Nobody else was teaching it at that time. Now we have hundreds of people teaching it and, and that's fabulous. Yeah. But when I was just teaching it, this couple came into my class and the mom was having her fourth baby and she was fine. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason they were there is because the husband was not. And he was so, he was just a bundle of nerves. <laughs> and he was telling me all about how awful his wife was treated, you know, the first three times she had a baby and he couldn't do anything about it and he didn't know anything. Mm. And so in Hypno Babies, we, we have all that information, like how to make excellent choices, how to be a great consumer, yeah. you know, so that you're not railroaded into things that do not yeah. serve you well. But I realized that, that the birth partners needed help too. So I went and recorded a track that's just for calming down the birth partner and to look at pregnancy and then childbirth as perfectly normal things that were going to play out with a lot more calm than that yeah. person was expecting. So it, it also became very personalized. So they have their own anchor that they can create. And when they say that during pregnancy and also during childbirth, they instantly become calm themselves and relaxed and able to support the birthing person much better. So nice. that was a really big thing that I did not realize. I, I didn't know that the birth partners would, would that need that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> now, what role does emotion play in this, if any? Emotion? Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. It's yeah. everything. And it is why in our tracks and in our affirmations, uh, we have a lot of imagery and visualization 
of what each person needs and wants. Yeah. So for instance, we have a track called visualize your birth and we don't tell them how to visualize their birth. We just guide them to the different phases yeah. of childbirth and in their mind, they are creating and rehearsing the birthing that they want. Yeah. That is important for anybody out there, by the way. Yeah. We know that athletes and uh, speakers will practice mentally yes, ahead true. of time to get into a zone and practice like the basketball player, practicing that shot over and over again in their mind, over and over again in their mind till when they get on the court, there it is. It's yeah. like all together, <laughs> the mind and the body works together because it's done it a thousand times before. Yeah. Yeah. And speakers will see in their minds, you know, themselves in front of a room full of people who are reacting positively towards them they're being funny they remember everything that they need to remember and then when they get there it's already in their head their body already has yeah. the memory of it everything yeah actually so I think that's they've what gotten studies about when you say about the basketball shot the visualization where when somebody they took sort of one athlete who's doing the practice shot over and over and over again and then another athlete who isn't physically doing, but is visualizing the perfect dunk every time. And then when they come, the one who had visualized it, the perfect shot every time actually performs better than the one who did physical practice, which is pretty, was remarkably shocking to me. I thought that was amazing. Well, and, and so for our moms, when they're visualizing their own birth, they're actually doing a birthing rehearsal yeah. of the birth the way they want it and end up holding their baby and kissing their baby mentally. Yeah. This is hugely emotional. Yeah. That was yeah. your original question. Yeah. So it, with the depth of emotion that they are creating this, they are able to not only feel much better about the birthing but they're actually creating a blueprint for their mind and body to follow yeah. for that birthing and we have a lot of people who say yeah i always visualize giving birth when the sun was coming up and then there it is that's yeah. when they do it and i'm oh, not saying wow. that's going to happen every time yeah. but it's amazing what the mind can create now, when you talk about tracks, and again, just for our listeners and our viewers there, and you may not be able to do this on the spot, but can you give us like a little sample of what, what that would be? Like if you were going to be creating a track, for example, for somebody, or even this idea about how, what, what are these first steps, you know, if you're wanting to get better prepared for, for difficult negotiations coming up or something, what, what is that as a practical matter? Like, what are the steps that you would take? Well, I'm, I should do a track about that because it's, it's a matter of relaxing your body and then relaxing your mind, relaxing your mind is relaxing. Your body is more with the breathing and the yawning, yeah. relaxing your mind is literally things like counting backwards or mentally walking down a set of stairs yeah. in your mind, each one taking you more and more relaxed mentally. And then if we're using hypnosis, then at that point, we deepen the hypnosis. So there's deepening techniques, but then we get to the point where, and people can do this by themselves. You know, we are saying phrases that are in I statements. So more like affirmations. Yeah. If it was a, if it was a track that somebody had created for you, then it would be you, it would be and so you always remember exactly what you need to remember. You stay absolutely calm when you are negotiating. You remember the points you need to make and the different things that would be important. But if a person was doing it themselves, then it would be I, yeah. you know, at that point, they would say, I know that I am really good at this. Yeah. I know that this is going to go really well. I know that I am going to remember everything I need to remember. And they could even rehearse for a particular negotiation right there in hypnosis. And it would be much more effective for yeah. them than if they just did affirmations from the outside in, which 
are good things. Yeah. This is beautiful. I, I can't, I can't, I wish we had more time to chat about this and we'll, we'll have to pick up the conversation. Maybe we'll have you create a special track for negotiation and get you to come back on and talk about that. Cause yeah, I think the applications I think are just so potentially profound and just, and I love again for our listeners out there, be open to the possibility of, you know, I, I call it negotiating with your subconscious, but having that sort of hypnotic approach where you are changing getting over the resetting, how would you describe it? Sort of resetting your brain, resetting your subconscious on some of these previously limiting beliefs. Was that a fair? Yeah, I would say retraining is probably more of a visual for people. If the mind is going to accept anything, it's going to say, okay, let's take this training because everybody's taken a training. Let's face it of some sort, whether it's from school, school, or a professional training, and you come out of it with a whole lot more knowledge. Yeah. So retraining the brain, yeah. or the rather the subconscious mind, yes, is is much more acceptable to people usually. Yeah. I like that because I, I do think we've got a lot of unlearning to do about so this constant inundation of programming about how we define success based on money and things that perhaps ought not to matter. So I think it's a brilliant concept. So we've talked about a lot about the mind. I normally like to end by asking, what's one of the greatest mindset shifts that you've ever had in your life? It doesn't have to be on this. It can be on anything. One of those aha moments for you, Carrie. Well, I didn't know if what I was doing was right. As far as hypno babies, I didn't know if I was on the right track. However, early on, I was teaching hypno babies and I was also going to birth as a labor assistant. And this one young couple having their first baby, I was going to be their doula. And so they called me up in the morning and said, oh, hey, you know, her water broke. Uh, Carlene, you know who you are if you're watching. <laughs> and I said, what are you going to do? And they said, well, we're just going to hang here at home. And and they did. They, they she, you know, she ate, she, cre- she baked cookies for the nurses. Wow. She listened to her tracks when they started being, you know, her, her, we call them birthing waves, started becoming more intense. And then at about five o'clock, the husband called me and said, you know, I think we're going to leave for the hospital. And I went, Okay. First time mom, you know, this was, had been about seven hours. So that was pretty good. And I said, uh, do you want me to meet you there? And he said, why don't you let us get there and then we'll call you. And they called me at seven. Yeah. (laughs) She was at nine centimeters. Wow. She's almost fully dilated. And I could hear him saying to her, do you want Carrie to come? And she goes, yeah, she can come. (laughs) So I, I got there and I walked in the room and this is what I saw. Okay. (laughs) I saw Carlene sitting over to the side in a chair with her head back and her arms out, just looking like she was asleep (laughs) and she was having a contraction, which we call birthing waves. Yeah. And so I'm like, cool. She was just breathing just yeah. breathing through it and peaceful, super peaceful. And then she got finished with the wave. I just stood in the doorway and I said, hi. And she said, hi. And I said, how you doing? She says, absolutely great. And then I look over, I shipped my gaze yeah. to her, her bed in the hospital, her hospital bed. And on it was sitting her obstetrician yeah. who I actually knew <laughs> And he had his jaw hanging open Yeah, <laughs> through the whole thing. And he turned to the nurse on the side and he said, how far dilated did you say she was? And she yeah. said, nine centimeters. Yeah. And then he turned to me and said, that hypno thing really works, yeah. doesn't it? Cool. I want you to come in and do an in-service for me at my office. Nice. And that's when I knew it yeah. was like this huge thing of, oh my gosh, this matters. For a first time <laughs> mom. Yeah. To have this kind of experience, it was fabulous. That's so that awesome. was my turning yeah. point. I love that. I love that. Talk talk about uh, sort of renewing your faith in, in what you were doing and giving you that recognition, right? That acknowledgement that you're on the right path. So where can yeah. people learn more about you, Carrie, and, and, and more about Hypno Babies? Well, we have a website at hypnobabies.com and it's H-Y-P. N O B A B I E S. And then we have a store at hypnobabies-store.com. 
And I invite people to email me at director at hypnobabies.com anytime if you have an issue that maybe hypnosis will help you with that I can help you try to find treatment for it. And what I mean by that is people don't know where to start. So if it's a fear or a phobia or, you know, self-confidence or whatever, you know, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of resources and I'll be happy to help. That's awesome. I love that. So again, for our listeners out there, you don't have to be a pregnant mom or an expectant dad. If you've got any issues, including making yourself a more powerful negotiator, just reach out and uh, see what this might do for you and have an open mind about it. So thanks so much for joining us, Carrie, and sharing this really interesting issue. I think it is mind expanding for us about the possibilities of it. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. Yeah. And I'm sure for our listeners that you got lots of value out of this episode and it pro- is for most of you, it has probably really expanded. I hope you have allowed it to expand your, the scope of the possibilities that you can see for this. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already done that and share it with anyone that you think could get benefit from this message. Certainly any expectant uh, mothers or fathers out there, but much beyond that as well. And let's face it, who couldn't benefit from this approach to life, being able to tap in and retrain our brains past all of those blocks that hold us back, past all of those limiting beliefs, retraining our brain to be able to experience pain differently so that we can manage. So uh, I wish that for all of you. And before we sign off today, just want to share some ways we can work together. If you're looking to up-level your negotiation skills, as some of you may know, I've got everything from online to group to one of my mastermind and VIP experience experiences to help you better leverage your innate power so you can get more of what you want and deserve in life and negotiate your best life. If that's interesting, check out our website at artoffemininenegotiation.com and make sure to grab a copy of my book, The Art of Feminine Negotiation, if you haven't done that already, and let me know what you think about it and what your favorite tips were. And that is a wrap for this episode. So until next time, go forth and negotiate your best life on your terms so you can stop missing out and start getting more of what you want and deserve from the boardroom to the bedroom. Until next time, take care.